It's an absolute honor to follow the Cousteau family today. They left an incredible legacy and continue to have a profound impact on our world's understanding and appreciation of our oceans. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here with you all today to speak about deep sea exploration and the innovations and technologies that have brought us this far and will continue to light the way as we embark on the next era of ocean exploration. At OceanX, we are on a mission to explore the ocean and bring it back to the world. Our goal is to cultivate a deep and personal connection with the ocean and create a global community engaged with the understanding, enjoying, and protecting of our oceans. Our team combines the three facets of next-gen technology, fearless scientific research, and compelling storytelling to accomplish this goal. Scientific research is critical in understanding the oceans and its impact on our planet. Storytelling and media are some of the most powerful tools we have to convey our message to the broader public. In this short video, you'll get a sense of some of the ways in which we brought science and storytelling together on our past missions. We believe this powerful combination of science and storytelling will not only advance our knowledge of our ocean and our planet, but will also inspire a deeper connection to the ocean for millions across the globe. Curiosity is who we are. It is exciting, it is thrilling, and yet it's also slightly terrifying. There's dangers to it, there's risks. The seafloor isn't a barren desert. It's so incredibly alive and it's connected. The first time you dive on a site, you don't really know what to expect. You reach into the unknown, you are gonna come back with something. That's been my drive, to discover things, to uncover mysteries that we can then solve. If it wasn't on Earth, where would it be? The greatest era of exploration is still ahead of us. Part of our core work at OceanX is to utilize the technology and resources aboard our marine research vessel, the Lucia, including her deep sea submersibles, to study the little known depths of our oceans. We pair our own science and research teams with those of our renowned partners to embark on missions that further our collective understanding of marine ecosystems and their inhabitants. On one of our most recent missions with partners, including the Cape Lurutha Institute and Florida State University Coastal Marine Lab, we were able to harness the power of technology, innovation, and storytelling in our mission to be the first ever team to tag an animal at depth from a deep sea submersible. This feat had never been accomplished before with most tagging of deep sea animals occurring at the surface. Traditionally, this process requires hauling the animal up on a long line through hundreds of meters before you tag, measure, and release it back into the ocean. The process is similar to how commercial fisheries operate and can be stressful for the animal and change its behavior patterns, impacting or skewing the scientific data released from the tag. Our team was searching for the blood nose six scale shark, a prehistoric animal has existed since the time of the dinosaurs. Six scales are elusive creatures and generally live at extreme depths. Our goal was to attach a satellite tag to a blunt nose six scale in its natural habitat of the deep ocean. After months of planning and experimenting and developing and honing our technology and tools, we traveled out to the Bahamas to search for the six scale. We fitted one of our two deep submersibles, Nadir, with a custom made satellite tagging device that was controlled and manipulated by our sub-operators and science team. For four nights in a row, we descended into the deep, baiting and waiting for the six scale. On June 29, 520 meters below the surface of the Exuma Sound, we made history. As you can see in the sequence, Dr. Gavin Naylor from Florida Museum of Natural History was able to pull the trigger and successfully attach a satellite tag to a blunt nose six scale shark at depth for the first time ever. The tracking device will allow scientists to study the movement patterns and natural behaviors of this shark species, and will shed light on the impact of accidental capture on its life cycle. It will also provide crucial information about these animals, movements in the coming months that will inform national and international management plans for deep sea species. Our successful tagging of a deep sea animal at depth marked a significant leap in technological innovation as deep sea ecologists will now have the ability to better understand the least known parts of our oceans and the creatures that inhabit them. Our team at OceanX has also had the honor of working with Dr. Edie Witter, an American oceanographer, 
marine biologist, and the co-founder and CEO and senior scientist at the Ocean Research and Conservation Association. Dr. Witter has been a leader in helping to design and invent new instrumentation and techniques that enable scientists to see the ocean in new ways. A specialist in bioluminescence, Dr. Witter was behind the pioneer technology that lured the giant squid into the view of cameras for the first time in 2012, along with teams from the Discovery Channel, NHK, and all in Ocean X's research vessel, the Lucia. As part of our filming for BBC's landmark natural history documentary series, Blue Planet 2, we traveled with Dr. Witter into the depths of the Humboldt current off the coast of Chile in search of the ferocious but shy Humboldt squid. Using her groundbreaking e-jelly advice that mimics jellyfish to learn predators, we captured some of the stunning squid fight footage that appeared in the series and exhilarated audiences. I'll let Dr. Witter tell you more about the incredible moment which underlined the importance of partnering with scientific and media platforms to capture and share milestones in marine biology and exploration. In terms of what we know about the ocean, it's kind of incredible that the primary means we have of understanding what lives in the ocean is we drag nets behind ships. That's amazing because that's hundreds of year old technology. And during my career diving in submersibles, I was always plagued by this idea of how much am I not seeing because we're scaring it away. So I wanted some other way to be able to observe life in the ocean and attract it to me. I wanted to be able to attract animals, but I didn't want to just put dead bait on the bottom because all that was going to do was attract scavengers. I wanted to be able to attract active predators. And so that was kind of the basis for the idea behind the e-jelly is to create a imitation bioluminescent display of this very common deep sea jellyfish. And it's thought that it serves as what's known as a bioluminescent burglar alarm. So if the animal is caught in the clutches of a predator, if it makes enough light, it might attract a larger predator that will attack its attacker. And so we developed this electronic jellyfish, which was just blue LEDs in a circle that could imitate that pinwheel effect. And we're able to use it as a lure. So it was the effectiveness of the e-jelly that got me invited along on a giant squid expedition off Japan in 2012. And I have never been a giant squid hunter, but I was out there with a couple of them. Uh, and uh, I think a lot of people were pretty skeptical of my approach with the red lights and the optical lure, but it worked and we got the first imagery of the giant squid ever in history and the e-jelly made it possible. This was an expedition off of Chile for Blue Planet 2. I was chief scientist uh, on this mission for the Aleutia and we wanted to see if the e-jelly was as effective in attracting Humboldt squid as it seemed to be in attracting giant squid and it turned out it was. That region off of um, South America it is called actually the Humboldt Current. And it's a really, really rich fishing ground and it's uh, a squid fishery. So we had good reason to think we'd see Humboldt squid there. Humboldt squid are maybe the most spectacular bioluminescent animal there is because they can flash their whole bodies in a method of communication that is truly spectacular and is clearly some kind of dominance display um, when they're tussling with each other over food. One of the amazing things about diving in the Humboldt Current was it just seemed like there was life all around us all the time. But the most visual example of that was when I saw the sonar with all of these Humboldt squid there are 50, maybe 100 squids circling the sub, but outside the range of our eyes and our cameras. And it reminded me of when I was diving in submersibles and wondering how many animals are, are there out there that can see me, but I can't see them. Uh, and here was a representation of a lot. <laughs> we need to be observing in the ocean the way naturalists have been able to do on land. I think there's a major misperception that we've explored this planet, but nothing could be further from the truth. We've barely begun to explore the planet. Potential for discovery in the ocean 
is enormous. This is the only rock we know of that can sustain life. And we really need to know how it's done before we mess it up. Capturing the first ever footage of the giant squid and the first ever satellite tagging of a six scale shark at depth were groundbreaking moments in the scientific discovery of our oceans, showing the power and need for innovation and technology in deep sea exploration. To have been able to document and share those incredible moments with tens of millions of people around the world shows the unrivaled power of combining science and media to showcase the excitement of exploration to a global audience. These iconic moments have set the stage as we usher in the next era of ocean exploration through our new scientific research and media production vessel, Ocean Explorer. Ocean Explorer has been designed to push the boundaries of exploration, facilitate unprecedented science, and uniquely capture media and stories of the ocean, and to share those findings with the world. The ship is a floating and integrated research platform, giving scientists access to the most advanced research and analysis tools, and the capacity to design holistic experiments to explore and study the ocean in ways previously not possible aboard a singular platform, something that will have a tremendous impact for the global community. Ocean Explorer's submersibles, ROVs, AUVs, chemical and biological sampling tools, and centralized data integration systems will create endless in-house possibilities for science and media missions, opening up an entire world of possibilities in marine study. With this level of technology and innovation, we will not only be able to expand what scientists can research and how they can conduct that research. This will have a tremendous impact for the global community as we partner with nations, science institutions, and public and private entities to collaboratively explore and understand our blue planet. Here's more on Ocean Explorer and deeper insights into the vessel's creation and implications for deep sea exploration. <laughs> Ocean Explorer will be a Hubble or a Voyager or a Starship Enterprise. I've been excited to work with the team to design a ship that will be the greatest exploration, scientific research, and media platform to ever sail the ocean. We're really thrilled because with Ocean Explorer's maiden voyage, we'll be launching this new series in partnership with BBC and James Cameron that will be airing on National Geographic to venture into some of the least explored parts of the Indian Ocean. The decision was made to build a state-of-the-art research vessel. Ocean Explorer 1 is a paradigm shift. It views ocean exploration in a different way. In order to go to these very remote locations on the Earth and study in these very hostile situations, one needs a very advanced technological vessel that can carry enough people and enough of these modern tools to those locations to explore them in ways that had never been explored before. We have this ocean research vessel called the Lucia which we've been running for several years. Over that time, we began to realize some things we'd really love to have. So we began this kind of imagineering stage where we started, you know, wishing and hoping about what we want. There's a worldwide movement happening right now because we need to know more about the oceans and protect them. Human activities are beginning to dramatically impact the health of the ocean. At the same time, technology has allowed us to study parts of the ocean, explore parts of the ocean we never could do before. So in order to do that, we had to build a vessel that was capable of this extreme oceanography and marine biology and ocean exploration, the deepest parts of the ocean, uh, but at the same time, do it in a way that we could capture that in the most beautiful, brilliant storytelling media we could. So to take these amazing things that really only scientists and oceanographers get to see, and reveal them to the public. On the new vessel, we created fully independent launch system. So we can simultaneously launch a submersible, a remote operated robot, and we can launch a helicopter all at the same time. We felt very strongly that having humans in the ocean plays a key role in ocean exploration and storytelling. We all want the audience to see the full art of the science that's happening. So we've added all these other components in terms of dry laboratories and wet laboratories. The audience will feel that they're right there in the middle of the action. What it's like to be a scientist, what it's like to be a filmmaker, helicopter pilot or sub pilot. It's a crucial time right now to have a vehicle like this built 
with the sole mission of revealing to the world the absolute beauty and grandeur of the ocean. So my hope and dream for this vessel is in 15 years we'll look back and much like space exploration vehicles, we'll see a shift in human knowledge and human understanding about the ocean, but also an enrichment of human life. To do any really great project requires the orchestration of the best people in the world. It, it brought together scientists uh, of all dimensions, explorers, shipbuilders, media people, each the best in the world to be able to collaborate and visualize something that has never been done before. A ship like Ocean Explorer 1, there's, you know, there's no ship has ever been built like it. It's going to enable me, other filmmakers, scientists, explorers to just get out there and find things that we truly don't know are there yet. And so it's an unbelievable joy for me to be able to help to facilitate this with all these wonderful people and wonderful organizations. So we're very excited about our commitment to exploring the ocean and bringing it back to the world. The ocean is vast and still largely unexplored, and it will take a tremendous amount of collaboration and cooperation to conduct the scientific study needed to better understand it. We look forward to partnering with scientists, institutions, governments, and philanthropists, and anyone who cares about understanding the ocean to continue this important work. Thank you so much for tuning in today on World Oceans Day, and thank you for your commitment to protecting our expansive blue planet.